Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, what we're going to cover today in our video is armed combat. The bowmen of England and Wales, how did they fight hand-to-hand -hand personal combat once the arrows have been shot? It's a question I've been asked more than once. You know, did they just put their bows and arrows down and pile in as a mob? Or did they simply go to the rear? Well, I'm going to answer that question for you because it's been raised asked many times. So let's see what I've discovered. So how did the bowmen survive the battlefield once their arrows were shot? And it takes a little bit of answering because you've got to get under the skin of the bowmen of the age. And it's interesting because the English, they, they formed slightly different to the Welsh. And you imagine, so me, I was raised in Staffordshire in Lichfield. My first arrows were actually shot on the green just adjacent to the cathedral there. So that is continuing a history of the bowmen of the city of Lichfield. You go on through the medieval times to the Wars of the Roses and the bowmen of Beverly. The town was so proud of its bowmen, it issued them with padded jacks and had on their shoulder from Beverly embroidered by the ladies of the town. So within the shires, within the towns of England, there was a pride. So if you were a young lad and you're shooting at the butts, the back of Warwick Church, St Mary's there, and you're shooting away every Sunday morning, and it's always your mates, it's the same guys, you're coming up, you're coming up, you're coming up, then there's a levy that's got to be filled. When you turn up for that levy, because you're of age, they're your friends. You already know them. But it isn't just a case of your proficiency to be able to shoot the bow. It's what other weapons could you use? What other weapons did you bring? Now, I've, I've shown some of these weapons before. This, a hatchet, perfect for chopping people. This, oh, it's just an agricultural billhook, isn't it? Now, some of the bowmen put these on sticks so they could gut out the horses. This is horrible stuff. But I've got a couple of new weapons that I've added for this. And I found this in a, in a bit of a junk market the other day. Thor's hammer. Yes, it's the original. I don't think so. This is a rock hammer. But if you hit somebody the back of the helmet with one of these, they're going to go down. This, I think this one's a three pounder. So, wow, what a hit. Tuck into the back of your belt. But my favourite, and it's something I've been asked about for years, well, well, what was an archer's maul? People used to say, a maul. A maul can be a heavy club with spikes on it. A maul can be a great big enormous lump of wood with nails in the end. In fact, they used them in the First World War. But traditionally, though, the maul was what you knocked your stakes in when you were getting ready for a battle. You would knock your stakes into the ground with a heavy maul. You would then sharpen them. And the maul would then be put to one side. But if you've got a guy in the battle, right, in your company, who is six foot one, six foot two, because there were big people in those days, he'll be the guy who will carry the maul into battle. I've got one here. I've made one specially for you. Here you go. For knocking in the wooden stakes. Or for bashing the brains out of an enemy man-at-arms. Or for breaking the knee of a man-at-arms because you want to take him prisoner. You work in your companies. So there you go, you're shooting your bow and arrow, your arrow supply is dwindling, the message comes, we're almost out of arrows. You shoot your last arrow, the first thing you do is you look at your vintner or your sentinel, your officer, they'll have a pennant. All your guys will have the same coloured coats or a mark. When they advance, you don't all just run as a mob, you advance together. And then when you hit the enemy, you hit them as a cohesive force. Lightly armoured, lightly dressed, you're quite nimble. You imagine being a man-at-arms, you're armoured up, you are a fit killer. But all of a sudden, there's 12 of me. But I'm the oldest. All the rest are a lot younger than me. Knives, hammers, daggers. How about an old piece from a previous battle? It's not a full poleaxe, it's what's left of a poleaxe. This is nice and light, quite handy for a bowman. He can use it as a hammer, as an axe, and as a spike. These men were quite something. But what I love about the bowmen, both of England and Wales, 
is their companies. I love the way they fought together, they lived together, and of course, they died together. But I heard a saying many years ago, which kind of relates to these men. Have faith, keep faith, first with the man next to you, and then with God. I like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the all notification button so you know what's coming on down the line. But before I go, mention a few of my Patreon members, Mark Wright, Michael Andervolt, and Lexi. Some great names here, isn't it? Thanks a bunch, guys. Bye for now.